Folks, we all know the story of David and Goliath, don't we? Yes, no. Yeah, that nine foot, 400 pound giant was bullying, harassing the kids. One day a 17 year old bull came and he asked his brothers, why don't you fight the giant? And they said, David, don't you see? He's too big to hit. David said, no, he's not too big to hit. He's too big to miss. Winners form the habit of doing things that losers don't like to do. Folks, winners don't do different things. They do things differently. They put in that extra effort even when it hurts. When a person's value system is clear, decision making becomes a lot easier. They are not easy decisions, but decision making becomes a lot easier. Time does not come and go away at all. Time is eternity. Time is standing still. We come and go away. <laughs> we come and go away. You see, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is mystery. Today is a gift. That is why they call it a present. Shiv Kara is an internationally recognized educator and motivator who has experienced many different cultures in diverse corporate environments. Through his experiences with audiences of 10 to 10,000, Shiv has discovered one common denominator for success, attitude. Shiv will help you discover the secrets to a winning attitude and bring vitality to your workplace through personal ethics and integrity. Once you understand his concepts, you will outperform and outsell your competition and realize your true potential. Success is a matter of laws and not luck. And the first law of success is called the law of cause and effect, which says for every effect there is a cause. In the vernacular, they call it the law of sowing and reaping. And the law of sowing and reaping says, one, you must have the desire to sow. And two, desire alone won't do it. You've got to sow two. And three, you sow tomatoes. You're not going to get potatoes. Four, you must sow first. But the kind of world we're living today, people want to reap before they sow. It doesn't work that way. You've got to sow first before you reap. And five, when you sow, you don't reap instantly. There is a gestation period to it. But the kind of world we're, li we're living today, people want to reap instantly. They used to instant tea, instant coffee. You heard many times, don't work hard, work smart. Have you heard that? Of course, folks, work smart, don't get me wrong. But when working smart starts compromising values, boy, that's an expensive way. Folks, the saddest part of human life is when people want to make money without earning it. Hello? <laughs> the saddest part of human life is when people want to make money without earning it, that's the time they start compromising values. Folks, when I wrote my book, You Can Win, going back a couple of years ago, I had two nephews. They were 12 and 14, and they started playing tennis like professionals. So one day my, my cousin came over and said, Jim, this game is getting very expensive. These guys are going through the rackets, the coach, the lawn, the balls. I mean, it's getting very expensive. So I said, if it's getting so expensive, one, why don't you have them stop playing tennis? And two, it is getting expensive as compared to what? It's relative. But I said, tell me, when they come back from school at one or three, they're all the time at hand and all the energy in the body. If they will not play tennis, what will they do? There was silence for 30 seconds. He says, Shiv, I think it's cheaper this well continue. So I thought, you reap an action. 
You sow an action, you reap a habit. Folks, any action we do repeatedly becomes a habit. And you sow a habit, you reap a character. Folks, I don't care how old you are. All parents said the same thing. Everybody's parents said the same thing. Form good habits and habits form characters. We never think we just act. And if you got positive habits, you are a positive character. You got negative habits, you are a negative character. And folks, good habits are hard to come by, but they are easy to live with. Bad habits come easy, but they're hard to live with. And before you got the habit, the habits got you. Hello? Positive thinking does not guarantee success. Positive thinking with effort increases your probability of success. You remember when Muhammad Ali used to go into the ring, what did he say? He used to say what? I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, I'm the greatest, I'm the champion. Boy, that was positive thinking. I'm the greatest, I'm the champion. He never said, I hope I win, I hope I win, I hope I... No. (laughs) While he walked in, he said, I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, I'm the greatest. When he used to walk into the ring, he used to look at his opponent, he used to say, you got the belt, but I am the... I am the champion, you got the belt, but I'm the champion. Before he ever became the champion inside the ring, he became the champion outside. But folks, he did not become the champion by shouting, I am the champion. (laughs) While he was doing this positive thinking, I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, he was not sitting in the living room watching TV, drinking beer and having popcorns. While he was doing the positive thinking, he was in the ring punching the bag. I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, I'm the greatest, I'm the champion, I'm the great. Folks, positive thinking with effort increases your probability of. And negative thinking with effort reduces your probability of success. And that is the winning edge. Confidence without humility is called arrogance. But you see, confidence with humility brings a lot of pride, and pride is a positive word. National Panasonic is a client of ours, and the other day I asked, what is the reason for Japanese success? What management style did they follow? And guess what he said? He said, one thing they have followed is, is pride in the country. It is not Kaizen, it is not JIT. And pride in the country does not mean that my country is better than yours, yours better than mine. That's a very narrow meaning to it. Pride in the country means anything made in Japan carries the respect and dignity of every citizen, does it not? Yes, no. To them, Quality product responsible behavior is considered patriotic and poor quality irresponsible behavior is considered unpatriotic. Case closed. Shiv has authored an international bestseller, You Can Win, which has sold over 500,000 copies in two languages. He has taken his dynamic message to opposite sides of the globe, from the United States to Singapore and has appeared on numerous radio and television shows. Over 17,000 people have benefited from his three-day workshop, and a quarter million people have heard him as a keynote speaker. Shiv's trademark is, winners don't do different things, they do things differently. In any country that you go, who is the first person you meet anywhere when you clear the immigration and customs? Always the taxi driver. Yeah? Always the taxi driver. Any country. And you know something, folks? If a tourist comes into your country for two or three or four days 
And if the first experience with the taxi driver is not good, the balance three days is not very pleasant either. <laughs> He's not a taxi driver. He's a diplomat of Singapore without a diplomatic passport. <laughs> Folks, let me share with you why I brought this gentleman here. Very simple reason. I gave him a business card to get me. He's been with me. I come in and out for the last two, three years. Every time I come in, he's with me all day long. I gave him a business card going back when he started with me a couple of years ago. And he took me to the last spot. And he circled around the building. Meter read $11. I pulled out 11 bucks. He took 10. I said, Henry, your meter reads 11. He said, sir, I'm a taxi driver. I'm supposed to bring you straight to your destination. Since I didn't know the last spot, I had to circle around. Had I brought you straight here, it would have read $10. He says, yeah, go ahead. He said, sir, Hear this, legally I am entitled to 11, but ethically only 10. Hello? <laughs> legally I am entitled to 11, but ethically only 10. Folks, there is a world of a difference between legality and ethics. Something could be legal, but unethical. When I do these programs internationally, many times I'm asked, Chef, don't you see cultural differences in people? I said, funny part is, I find more similarities in people than differences. What I find cultural to me appears very surface issues. They may not end up as surface issues, but to me they appear very surface issues Example, in the Western world, the thumbs up sign is a sign of what? Encouragement, keep going your own track, victory. In the Middle East, some places, the thumbs up sign means you showed me a thumb, you insulted me. <laughs> That's cultural. In India, we worship the snake and the rat. That is cultural. In Singapore, number four is considered unlucky, death. Ha, That's cultural. Emotional appeals are totally identical. I have never seen any difference anywhere. Integrity and cheating is given the same meaning in New York, New Delhi, New Zealand, no difference at all. Folks, the big question is, how do we identify universal benchmarks? Let me ask you, whatever business you are in, do you have quality standards and benchmarks? Yes, no. If you did not have those quality benchmarks, could you ever achieve them? No. Now the question is, how do you get universal benchmarks on values and ethics? Folks, I'm going to share with you one little story, and after I'm going to ask you two questions, so please listen to the story carefully. There was an elderly lady about 85 years old with two bags of groceries in her hand waiting for a bus. Right behind her, there was a big boy also waiting for a bus. The bus came. They both got on the platform, and it was jam-packed. There was only one seat available at the far end, and the elderly lady started walking to get that seat. And this big boy threw his big arm around the lady and took a big step and a big step, and he took that seat. And this elderly lady fell on a few people's lap, and all her hands of 
bags of grocery got scattered, and she was lying on the floor. Now, there were many passengers in the bus. One of the passengers was a sophisticated lady, and she started thinking, how clumsy of this boy. She is looking at the etiquette, manners of the boy. There's a lawyer in the bus who thinks there must be a law against this kind of behavior. There's a surgeon in the bus. He thinks this lady must have broken three ribs. He is looking at it surgically. And there's a psychiatrist in the bus. He thinks this boy is psychotic, needs mental help. Four people thinking four different ways. One is looking at the etiquette, legality, surgically, mentally. Not one of them ever asked this question. Was this behavior right or wrong? Folks, let me ask you, why don't we ask this question? Because the moment we ask this question, we become judgmental, yes, no. And let me ask you, if your values are clear, what's wrong in being judgmental? Now, let me ask you two questions, folks. Should this boy have behaved like this with this lady? Yes, no. Yes, no. Two, should anyone behave like this with anybody? That's your universal benchmark. Anything I could say. So that tour de force will be an anticlimax. I think that we must all agree that that was an extraordinary, inspirational, I was going to say message, but series of messages. It was a very rich fair indeed, and I hope that we shall all go away and think rather profoundly about a lot of what Shiv Kera has said to us this evening. I was particularly impressed by his emphasis on commitment and integrity to the individual and the way he related that to a values-based society. Shiv Kerry, you have certainly shown this evening that you are worthy of individual respect, if I may say so, and what an extraordinary moment to pass in the company of someone who manages to combine reason and passion in such equal measure. Thank you very much.